Hey there, fellow space enthusiasts! Welcome back to our channel, where we dive deep into the cosmos to bring you the most incredible celestial discoveries. Today we've got something truly out of this world for you. Webb, the telescope that's been making headlines since its launch, has just focused on the most distant star ever, and folks, it's mind-blowing! With the help of the powerful eyes of the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, scientists have started to figure out how far away the farthest star ever found is. The Hubble Space Telescope was the tool used to find that star, which is now called Arendelle. The light from Arendelle's star has taken 12.9 billion years to reach Earth. This means that the star started giving off light less than a billion years after the Big Bang, which created our world. But Arendelle is not just 12.9 billion light years away from our solar system. Since the Big Bang, the universe has been growing at an ever faster rate. As a result, the star is now an amazing 28 billion light years away from Earth. Hubble was able to find Arendelle because of something called gravitational lensing. In this event, the gravity of a large object in the center bends space and time in a way that's similar to how a lens works. As a result, light from an object farther away bends and gets brighter as it goes by the object in the center. The JWST team used a similar method to bend space. They used the power of a gravity cluster called WHL0137-08 to do this. The group of galaxies is lined up with Arendelle by chance. The $10 billion telescope, which uses infrared light to look at the sky, saw Arendelle in the summer of 2017, not long after it started doing science. But that short look is now more than that because astronomers now have enough information to start describing the star that broke the record. For example, the near-infrared camera or near-cam on the James Webb Telescope shows the star to be a massive B-type star that's more than twice as hot as our sun and about a million times brighter, according to a statement released by NASA today, August 9th, about the new observations of Arendelle. If you were asking, the surface of our sun is about 5,500 degrees Celsius or 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit hot. The sun is a type of star called a G-type star. Based on what was written in the NASA paper, astronomers think they see hints of a cooler, redder companion star in the colors of the star. Because the universe is expanding faster and faster, this light has wavelengths that are longer than those that Hubble's devices can see. Webb was the only thing that could pick it up. NASA officials say that it wouldn't be a surprise if Arendelle had a partner star because most huge stars, like Arendelle, are found to be part of a two-star system. For instance, the scope has found a part of the galaxy that, from our point of view, is less than 5 million years old. This area is where the stars are being made. Its pictures showed that there was a larger group of stars near Arendelle. This group of stars seems to be safe in terms of gravity, and if all of its stars are still working as they should, it may even still be around today. And as the JWST keeps studying Arendelle and other old stars, it's likely to find out more about them. NASA officials said the discoveries have shown us a new part of the universe and given scientists who studied the early universe new things to look at. At one time, galaxies were the smallest things in the universe that could be seen. Now, stellar physics has given stellar physics access to a new part of the world. The research team has some cautious hope that this could be a step toward finding one of the very first stars which were made of nothing but hydrogen and helium when the universe was created in the Big Bang. Let's talk more about Arendelle, which is the most distant star that the Hubble telescope has ever found. How'd the name come to be? Why don't we find out? With the help of the Hubble Space Telescope, scientists have just made a great find and they've given it a very unique name. Researchers from Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, led by astronomer Brian Welch, have found the farthest single star that's ever been seen. They did this with the help of images from the Hubble Space Telescope. Even though the star's official name is WHL0137-LS, they gave it a much more familiar name, Arendelle. If you like the fiction books that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote, like Lord of the Rings and the Cimmerillion, then you might already know this name. Michelle Thaler, a NASA scientist, told Space.com that the name comes from one of Tolkien's works of fantasy fiction. Thaler said, The star has a great name. It's called Arendelle, which is a word from Tolkien. Thaler wasn't part of the team that found Pluto, but she's the assistant director for science relations at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. She's in charge of Earth science, planetary science, heliophysics, and astrophysics, among other things. In Old English, Arendelle's the name of a person, but it can also mean the morning star or the dawn. The Anglo-Saxon tongue gave us the name Arendelle. 
In The Lord of the Rings, Arendelle's a figure who's half-elf and sails the seas with a jewel called the Morning Star. The name for this gem is Silmaril, which is an old English word that means the Dawn Star in English. And this is a star that literally comes from the beginning of time, the beginning of star information, Thaler said. This is the oldest and farthest star we've ever seen. I really like the name Arendelle for it. We have a sneaking suspicion that this is not the very first generation of stars, she said. One expert said, we think this might be one of the later ones, maybe a few tens of millions of years after the first stars formed in the universe. But this faraway star, which is 12.9 billion light years from Earth, might not be the first generation of stars, but it is the most distant star ever found, so the name seems to fit. Thaler says, the young man who found the star chose the name. He's most likely talking about Welch when he says this. Welch picked this name because he likes Tolkien, and the interest came through in his choice of the name. During her live chat with Space.com, Thaler showed off the elvish writing that's tattooed on both of her arms. Tolkien made up the elves' language so he could use it in his book, The Cimmerillion. So, Irondel is a big B-type star that's more than twice as hot as our sun and about a million times as bright. The big galaxy cluster called WHL 0137-08, which is between Earth and Arendelle, magnified the faraway object, which is how we can see the star in the Sunrise Arc galaxy. This is the only reason the star could be seen. This is called gravity lensing, and it happens when things that are close together act as a magnifying glass for things that are farther away. Gravity basically distorts and amplifies the light from galaxies that are very far away. In this case, the galaxy cluster made the light from Arendelle much brighter by a million million times. Astronomers are still looking at the data that Webb collected so they can get a better idea of how far away the Sunrise Arc galaxy is. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. If you found this content valuable, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Your support means the world to us, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. We'll catch you in the next video. Until then, stay inspired and keep exploring.